Hey guys, in today's video, I'm talking about this annoying message that pops up sometimes when you're sending emails. In my attempts to explain this, I'll briefly talk about the internet, emails, and the cloud. These definitions are really basic. In no means do they define these concepts entirely. But we'll start off with something really basic like this video and I'll add in some more details in the videos to follow. When you want to send over a picture to get your t-shirt or your cake printed, the last thing that you want to worry about is what is Google Drive and why is 25 such an important number? Well, to set in some perspective, I'll talk to you guys about email. The first email was sent back in 1971 and since then we've come a long way. Today we send around 205 billion emails in a single year that makes two and a half million every second. That's a lot of data and that's the issue. It's a lot of data. The guys who run emails, I'll define these guys in a bit. They want to make sure that emails remain as responsive, as robust and quick as they are today. Email is almost instantaneous and that's because when you're sending just text or a little document, it doesn't take a lot of effort to send it over a well-established network. But the problem is today emails support images, high definition images, uh, videos and so on. And that's the problem. These files are really heavy and it takes time to upload this data onto a server and then download it back at the other end. If you are allowed to upload all the videos and the photos in your computer and send it via email, first of all, it'll take forever to upload and download. But apart from that, you'll also be clogging up the network for everyone else. That's why these guys set these limits. Now getting back to these email guys, what I mean is there are two kinds of people which make email possible. Firstly, they are email clients. That's the software you use to send these emails. Examples would be Outlook, Gmail and so on. These guys set up software which can organize your email and allocate a specific space in their server. Leading us to the second kind of people, email servers. Now, email servers, simply put, is a storage device. It is a little more complicated than that, but the primary task it does is it stores your emails. An email server allows email clients to download and upload information onto the server. Now, if I was sending you an email from gmail.com and let's say you are at live.com, when I'm sending this email to you, uh, my client, Gmail, will upload it to its server, Gmail server, that server will exchange it with your server, live server, and that live server will allow your client, live mail, to download that email. Now, we don't need to be with the same email guys. When, I'm, when I say email guys, I mean the client and the server in order to uh, exchange emails across each other. We can do it despite not being on the same side. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up email entirely. When I was talking about the network being clogged, uh, the internet is nothing but a network of networks. So it's not just one cable that sends data from you to your server to your destination and back. It's not just one cable, but it's a collection of these cables. That's what makes uh, the internet so versatile. If one of these services are down, like email, possibly everything else is still up. Remember I told you a short while ago that your email client allows you to allocate a specific space in your email server? Well, uh, Google takes it one step further with their Gmail. They give you 15 gigabytes of space. Now that's a lot of space just to send email. But um, this is not just for email, but for all of their services that they offer. Uh, I was talking about this in one of my videos before, but since it's important, I'll just briefly cover it up over here. When you open a Google account, they give you 15 gigs of storage in one of their servers somewhere. And you can use this 15 gigs for any of Google's software. You can use it for your contacts, your photos, your videos, all of your documents and everything else <laughs> that you do online. The word cloud I used a while ago is just a fancy word for saying stored, not here. Um, it's not sh stored in your computer, it's stored elsewhere. That's what the cloud means. I don't even know why they picked this word cloud. Uh, it's not stored on a cloud. I thought that it was stored on a cloud too for a very long time and I was thinking, whoa, technology is just kicking it. But no, I looked it up, it's not stored on the cloud. Um, it's actually stored on physical servers. Physical servers are just hard disk drives stacked up one above the other. They have a really rich network that allows you to access this data from those servers really, really quick. We are talking microseconds quick. Okay, getting back to the 25 MB question. Uh, Gmail provides two features on Gmail. First one is all the robustness of Gmail. 
which means that you'll send a pic- you you can send emails with attachments and they are super fast they are almost instantaneous they reach your destination really quick but there's a limit to this uh, and the limit is 25 megabytes now they've decided they can handle 25 megabytes of data to maintain that robustness now 25 megabytes is a lot of data if you're sending only documents one or two page documents you won't even reach this limit but if you have an image that is heavy and small videos that you need to send then you can use google drive that's what this message is telling you it means that if you since your data is larger than 25 megabytes you have to upload it to your google drive that's your 15 gb that google gave you and send a link to that drive to your friend now when you send him the link he accesses your drive because you provide access when you send him this link don't worry he can't see any other documents on your drive all he has access to is that one document that you're sending him in this email i said earlier that when you send email from gmail to live you, it's possible you don't need to be on the same client but when you send it via google drive the other guy also needs to have a google account in order to access your google drive uh, he also needs to have a google account now google accounts are not uh, limited to only at gmail.com you can also convert your work email into a google account this video already has sufficient information in it i hope that was helpful folks like this video if you liked it unlike it if you didn't like it and tell me what's not working for you leave me some comments on what do you think about this video subscribe if you want to watch more stuff like this and keep learning